Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices, and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure your new Wi-Fi module for your new Wi-Fi relay controller. The Wi-Fi module has to be configured uh, in order to connect to your network so you can access it uh, through TCP sockets. So we need to configure the Wi-Fi module, and to do that, you need to install the Wi-Fi module into your Wi-Fi module configuration board. This is a small blackboard with three LEDs on it that say USB RX TX. It should also be labeled Zygmo and it should have a USB connection. Now what we need to do is install the Wi-Fi module into this configuration board and then plug a USB cable into the module or into the board and then plug the other end into your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my Wi-Fi configuration board to the USB cable on my computer. Now when you do this, if you look on the bottom of the configuration board, you should see the USB light on solid. Uh, it may take a second or two for this to happen. Your computer may need to install drivers. And then the USB light should come on solid. Now if the USB light does not come on solid and basically just all the lights are off, then we need to install the USB driver in order to mount this board to your computer as a virtual COM port. Now the easiest way to do that is to just go to our website controlanything.com, click on the resources button up here at the top and then down here in the bottom right hand corner under drivers click on USB driver. This is going to forward you to FTDI's website, which is the manufacturer of the USB chip on the board. Now down here you'll see operating systems. I happen to be running Windows, so you could download these, uh, these drivers here, but that requires a little bit of extra effort to get them installed. Instead, I recommend on clicking on the setup executable link over here to the right and that will just give you a setup exe that you just run it installs and you don't really have to do anything but go through that installation process which is very simple now once you have that installed and the usb light on the bottom of your module is on solid you may need to unplug the board and then plug it back in if you install this driver um, we're ready to see what the com port number is of that board so i'm going to go ahead and minimize my browser and then i'm going to go down to start control panel and then system and security on Windows 7 or just the system icon on uh, Windows XP and then we need to go to device manager right here we'll click that and it'll bring up the device manager and I can expand uh, ports com and LPT here and we'll see that uh, a USB serial port com 12 has been created um, if you were to unplug your board, you should see this port disappear and then plug it back in. It would reappear, it, reappear again uh, if you're not sure which one it is. So mine happens to be COM12, so we'll keep that in memory. So now we'll go ahead and just close the device manager now that we know the COM port number. And now we need to actually download the software for configuring the Wi-Fi module. So once again, we're going to go uh, to our website. <coughs> and click on the resources button here at the top and then we're going to click right here on the resources page where it says Wi-Fi configuration software Wi-Fi devices if we click that you'll see it downloads and it's a zip file so we'll go ahead and open that and then we'll open the Wi-Fi configuration software folder in here and then we're going to run this application right here, this Wi-Fi configuration software. It's an application type. We'll just double click on that. Uh, and we need to extract first. Let's go ahead and extract it. It's going to put it in my downloads folder. Now we can open it up. Now uh, it's just giving me a little warning here. Uh, go ahead and just click the run button. And now it's asking us to select COM port. We saw earlier that the modem was connected to COM12, so we'll expand this and click on COM12, and then click OK. This little progress bar here will update once all the information is retrieved out of the module. 
The module will have a network name already stored into it. This is actually the router that we connect the device to for testing prior to shipping it to you. But here is where you're going to enter all the information of your network. Um, if you don't know what inner network name SSID is and all that, we can, uh, we can actually bypass that by clicking scan for networks. And this is going to show all the available Wi-Fi networks that are within range of this module. <clears throat> and you'll see that there's several of them near me here. I actually want to put mine on Action Tech New. So I'll click that and then click Select. And then that will fill in the network name for us. Now we want to enter the network passphrase right here. Um, whatever the, uh, the password is uh, to access your wireless router, you'll need to enter that right here. And then we can give the, the module itself a name so it's a little bit easier to find on the network. I'll just call this one uh, Travis Wi-Fi Relay. And then we need to put in a device port number. By default, this should be set to 2101, and this is what I generally use, so I'm going to leave it set to that. Um, you can set this port number to virtually anything you want. Uh, you know, pretty common is 2101, so I'm going to leave it there. And then you can uh, check or uncheck this join network on power up. I recommend leaving that check, which just basically means that as soon as the module powers up, it'll attach to the network. The PIC chip on the board doesn't have any way of telling the module to connect, so you pretty much always just want to leave that checked. And here we have a socket timeout checkbox. And basically what this is, is if your software connects a socket to the controller, and then it just sits there and doesn't send any data to the module, the module is going to automatically disconnect that socket. And this can be extremely important if you're using mobile devices to control the board. So say you connect a socket with your cell phone and then you walk off and basically you lose connection but the socket was never closed. That module is going to be sit sitting there with a connected socket and nothing else will be able to connect to it. You'll actually have to go over and power cycle the device to get a connection to it again. So if you're using a mobile device like that, I recommend uh, checking that socket timeout. And then down here, uh, I have it set by default for DHCP, which means it will obtain a IP address from the router. Um, if you're using this device on a network switch or you don't have a DHCP uh, server of any type, you can click on static IP address and you can enter an IP address here. Um, you'll see it puts in IP equals. You can just erase that and just type in your IP address here, the default gateway and the subnet mask. And then the device will always try to use that IP address. That being said, you need to make sure that that IP address is reserved on the network so no other device on the network tries to take that IP address. So be careful whenever you're storing this. Um, if you store it incorrectly, then you'll need to install the module back in your modem and redo this configuration. I, however, am going to leave mine on DHCP. Now, once we have all of our settings stored in here, all we need to do is click Save to Wi-Fi right here. And that's going to write all these settings into the module. And you'll see a progress bar and a lot of text going through over here. And this is basically going through the programming and setting the parameters. Now once the storing is complete, you'll see ready and you'll see associated. Below that, the module will tell you all of its information on the network. Like right here, it's actually telling us it's the IP address it got from the network, which is 192.168.0.2, and then it's on port 2101. So you may want to uh, write that down so that you know the device's IP address. Um, that should be whenever we pull this module out of the configuration board and plug it into a relay board, that will be its IP address. So that's kind of handy to know. Um, also, you can actually save this profile. If you click Save Profile, if you have a lot of these to, uh, to program, you can save the profile and then plug in your next module and just click the Save button again. You don't have to set these every time. So now that we're all done with that, we can actually close this software and we're actually ready to test this controller. So I'm going to close that software and close these other windows. And then we're back to the resources page on the website. 
And here we need to get some software so we can test out our new controller. I recommend the NCD component library right here. If you click and download that uh, and run through the installation process, it will actually install that NCD component library into your program forward. I already have it installed, so I'm not actually going to go through that process, but just know to run the installation there and it'll be in your program files. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize my browser here. And at this point, I'm ready to install the module into a relay board. So I'm going to disconnect the USB cable from the, uh, the configuration board. And then I'm going to remove the Wi-Fi module from that. And then I'm going to install it in my actual relay board. And once we have that module installed, we can actually power up the module. And we apply power. And what you should see is you should see the LEDs flashing back and forth on your Wi-Fi module. And then eventually you should see the green LED start flashing slowly. And what that green LED flashing slowly indicates is that the module is connected to your router and has a good connection. So we're going to assume that it probably is, uh, got the same IP address that it got last time it was connected to the network. So we're actually ready to test the board. I'll go to start and then I'll go to programs and then I'm going to scroll down to NCD component which is that, uh, that download and under this you'll see samples and under samples you'll see something like ProXR Relay Sample 1 and we'll go ahead and click that to run this program. And here we'll click on network because this device is connected to the network. We'll enter the IP address, which mine was 192.168.0.2, and the port number of 2101, and then we'll click OK. Then you'll get this window pop up, and you can click the buttons to turn your relay on and off. And that is essentially all there is to configuring your new Wi-Fi module and actually testing it on the network. So that's about it for this video. There will be, of course, more videos going a little more in-depth into the Wi-Fi uh, products. But this is pretty much all you need to know for configuring and setting up your new Wi-Fi module to connect to your network and getting it in your board and testing it for the first time. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please contact us and let us know. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one. So thank you.